My dear brothers and sisters, it is important work to teach, prepare, lift and strengthen the rising generation. I feel an urgency and an intensity about that work. The youth and young adults of the Lord's Church face many difficult challenges and many wonderful opportunities. The world around them is filled with powerful technologies that are used for great good and terrible evil. Many of our young people are in countries affected by wars and rumors of wars, acts of terror, corruption, the destruction of families, political and social disruption, secularism, and the ravages of poverty, disease, and famine. In the midst of all this commotion and turmoil, however, the Lord Jesus Christ is preparing his kingdom and his people for his return. He is moving in power all across the earth to gather scattered Israel, to build up his kingdom, and to establish Zion. His arms of love and mercy are stretched out to the youth and young adults of his church, inviting them to receive his healing, strengthening, and redeeming power in their lives. The great war between good and evil that began in the pre-mortal realm continues with growing intensity in the latter days. In that battle, the youth and young adults of the rising generation are not at the home front. They are on the front lines and they will play an increasingly crucial role in the great work of the Lord, which brings me to you. You are right there on the front lines with the rising generation. This is what you do. You teach these wonderful young people the gospel of Jesus Christ, and you help them receive divine power in the priesthood, in the temple, in the companionship of the Holy Ghost, in the Holy Scriptures, in sacred covenants and ordinances. It is God's power, and he gives it to his beloved sons and daughters so that they can love and teach and serve with faith and hope in him, doing his work all of their lives. The youth and young adults that you teach are amazing, but we need many, many more of them to receive the blessings of the priesthood in the temple, to serve missions, to marry in the temple, to create eternal families, to serve the Lord in his kingdom, and to be a light to the world. Many more of them. That means you need to keep getting better and better at what you do. The Lord needs you to be even more powerful and more effective in this great work. I want to share with you today some thoughts that I hope will be helpful, helpful to you as you pursue that divine purpose. My message is very simple. We need to do more to help the youth and young adults of the church experience joy, authentic spiritual joy in the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe the best way to do that is through deep learning of the doctrine of Christ in the Lord's way. It is my witness and testimony to you that deeply learning the doctrine of Jesus Christ leads to joy in the Lord. As President Nelson has taught, my dear brothers and sisters, the joy we feel has little to do with the circumstances of our lives and everything to do with the focus of our lives. When the focus of our lives is on God's plan of salvation and Jesus Christ and his gospel, we can feel joy regardless of what is happening or not happening in our lives. Joy comes from and because of him, he is the source of all joy. That is the joy our young people need to feel. It protects them against evil motivates them to be righteous, feeds their desire to always have the Holy Ghost with them, and draws them to the Lord. The Savior has given us a wonderful pattern in the Book of Mormon to help you 
help your students find joy in him. These are his words. Therefore, hold up your light that it may shine unto the world. Behold, I am the light which ye shall hold up, that which ye have seen me do. Behold, ye see that I have prayed unto the Father, and you've all witnessed. And ye see that I have commanded that none of you should go away, but rather have commanded that ye should come unto me, that ye might feel and see. Even so shall ye do unto the world. When the Savior appeared to the people at the temple at Bountiful, he loved them, taught them his doctrine, and blessed them. They felt great joy. In this passage, the Savior calls you to come unto him and through the power of the Holy Ghost, see him work, feel his love, and experience his joy. Then he commands you to take what you have seen and felt to your students. Love them, teach them, with his, teach them his doctrine, invite them to come unto him and feel his joy. If the love, doctrine, light, and joy of Jesus Christ are in you, you can inspire them and encourage them to seek out their own private, personal, spiritual experiences with the Lord. The learning that leads to joy is deep learning in the doctrine of Jesus Christ, and it must be done in the Lord's way. Deep learning is learning of the whole soul, the mind, the heart, the body, and the immortal spirit. Deep learning increases the student's power to do three things. First is to know and understand. This is knowledge of the mind and of the heart. Applied to faith in Jesus Christ, for example, students learn that faith in Christ is a principle of action and power. Through the witness of the Spirit, they feel the truth of that principle and begin to see more clearly, desire more deeply, and thus understand in their hearts more completely the workings of that principle in their lives. Second is to take effective righteous action. Students learn how to apply the principle of faith in Jesus Christ in their lives and then actually do it. For example, they may decide to act with faith in the Savior to have the courage to invite a friend to read the Book of Mormon. As they act with faith in him, their confidence in him grows and the Lord blesses them with greater faith. The third is to become more like our Heavenly Father. Becoming is a process of change in the character and very nature of the student. It comes through the redeeming and strengthening power of Jesus Christ. Applied to the principle of faith in the Savior, it means that a student increasingly becomes a more faithful person. Faith in Christ becomes an attribute of their character, who they are, as they repeatedly and consistently grow in knowledge and understanding of faith in Jesus Christ, act with faith in him to do what he wants done, and seek his gifts and blessings to become like him and his Father. These three dimensions of deep learning interact with and reinforce one another. Becoming a faithful person increases a student's capacity to know and understand. Deeper understanding motivates more effective action, which in turn creates new insights and leads to stronger character. There is great joy in each element of deep learning. Joy in new understanding. Joy in righteous action. Joy in becoming more like the Father and the Son. The teacher in the Lord's way plays an active inspired role in engaging students in all elements of deep learning. Two things are essential. First, that you have the Holy Ghost with you. And second, that you love the students.
I want to close today with three invitations. I know that if you act on these invitations, you will help your students learn even more deeply in the Lord's way and experience even more joy in Him. Invitation number one, eternal identity and purpose. I invite you to help your students learn who they really are. Help them see and feel and know that they truly are children of God, His beloved sons and daughters. Please help them feel deep in their hearts that they are spiritual beings having a mortal experience. The Lord and Savior Jesus Christ suffered and died for them so that they can progress toward perfection and ultimately realize their divine destiny as heirs of eternal life. That is Heavenly Father's plan for them. Please help make His plan real to them. Invitation number two, the Lord's way to deep learning. I invite you to help your students learn how to learn in the Lord's way. You do this in part by example. In a very powerful way, how you teach is what you teach your students about the Lord's way to learn. If you create for them experiences in learning in the Lord's way, they will learn His way. If you don't, they won't. I hope you'll teach your students the Lord's way to learn by your own example, but I also hope you will teach them His way directly, consciously, with intent. There is a wonderful opportunity to do that in doctrinal mastery, where the principles of acquiring spiritual knowledge te teach exactly the Lord's way of learning. As you teach those principles throughout the year, you will teach them the Lord's way to learn. That teaching can be done as well in the courses you teach in institute. Please help your students realize that the Lord's way applies to everything they study. Please, brothers and sisters, invite your students to take the Holy Ghost with them to school. Now, invitation number three, repentance and learning. I invite you to teach your students that repentance is central to deep learning. Repentance is the Lord's process for personal learning, spiritual growth, and becoming more and more like Him. Your students learn in the Lord's way through the redeeming and strengthening power of Jesus Christ working in their lives, opening to them His mercy and His grace. Please help your students understand that repentance is the divine process through which they can become more like the Savior all the time. Sometimes their repentance will be about something they need to stop doing. Sometimes it will be about something they need to start doing. Please help them know that repentance is much more than telling the Lord and their bishop they did something wrong. To sin is to turn away from the Lord. To repent is to return to Him. Repentance requires a change of heart and mind, a change of life tailored to the student's personal situation. Now I give you this promise. If you will teach your students who they really are, how to learn deeply in the Lord's way, and the divine principle of repentance, they will learn deeply the doctrine of Jesus Christ. Their faith in Him and love for Him will grow, and they will have joy in the Lord. Both you and your students will experience this marvelous promise of the Lord. Verily, verily, I say unto you, I will impart unto you of my Spirit, which shall enlighten your mind, which shall fill your soul with joy. I know that promise is true. I give you my witness that God our Father lives. Jesus is the Christ. He lives. 
This is their holy work. I so testify and leave you with my love. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen.